Welcome back. I'm not going to be working on the diesel today. In fact, I've just been sorting a locker out for the front end on it, but it's time to get back to the four litre. In the last episode, obviously chopping up the rear cargo floor pan, which went pretty well. And in this episode, there's going to be more cutting and it's time to do the box rockers. But in the meantime, I did buy some rust removal spray and I treated the floor pans, you know, just the pitting, the stuff that I, I basically can't wire brush out and I just want to prime over. So I'll see how that's doing at the end of the video because it needs a few hours to work. Well, here we go, rocker panel time. Now, first thing I've done before I've got stuck into these rocker panels is I've taken off this piece of weather strip here. This is like the older model Cherokee and it sort of rivets behind the door like that. I don't really see much benefit to this. And I think it's just good to let dirt and water get washed out rather than getting caught between a piece of rubber and the silk. Yeah, that's just my personal preference. I'm not really a big fan of like, rubber on my body but anyway i've got some tools in front of me big grinder small grinder a big grinder is kind of useful you are going to need a bit of depth basically in some of these cuts so this rocker panel doesn't look that bad and in fact right at the front here you can see it's looking really good in there in terms of like the front wing and some of the supportive material got a little bit of corrosion coming in from behind but um that's pretty pretty normal really um, but you can kind of see that I've just taken a straight edge and just etched a line using like a sharp point all the way along. We'll talk about this bit in a minute and I'll show you my diesel. But yeah, I'm just marking it all the way along and that's basically my cut line. I'm actually going to leave a slight drop on this lip here to weld to so I can pull the weld in this kind of this this angled gap going back as I put the box section in to replace this. I'll be able to pull weld there and it'll, it'll just make it easier to weld on this corner. It also keeps a bit of a gap between the door and the rocker panel, which is really important. So it's actually this bit here that you want to think about before you chop into this. Um, not because there could be a used condom in there that you might be able to reuse, but mostly because um, this is the wing. So you can unbolt it and replace it in the event of a collision or something. Now, if you look at my diesel, I've actually cut that and I've welded it to the box rocker. And that might not be something you want to do. Now, in the case of my diesel, it's so heavily modified and so much work's gone into modifying the wing for the fender that if I have to unbolt it, I'm going to have to do loads of cutting and modifying and repainting anyway. So it really doesn't matter to me. But on this uh, four litre, because I'm keeping it relatively stock, I think I'm just going to cut this all the way along and leave it free floating. I have to see how it goes. I'm not there yet, but it's just something to bear in mind if you're a step ahead of me. That should do it. So on the grinder front, I'm just using a two mil. And that just means that when I went off, off the line a little bit, I could just push up and down with a bit of leverage. Better to have a stiff one. Um, but you can see that the grinder doesn't really have enough range to get into some of these areas. So that's why I'm gonna use a bigger grinder in a little while. But that's a really easy cut. It comes out real clean. Um, you know, obviously this part here needs to be you know you've got to think about that really i mean i'm going to cut into all of this and basically it's going to all be welded um to the box rocker and then i'm going to use like cavity wax and everything and you know protect it like i did on my own vehicle um so and it, and it works fine because i mean my vehicle I, I did that job like eight years ago and it's still good so it just depends how you finish it really but now i'm just going to run the grinder all the way along the inner of the seam Thank you. 
So I just freed up the back end of the panel there, pretty easy, but this is really good news. I was hoping for this because this stuff here, you literally can't make this stuff. We're gonna bag this up, we're gonna sell it, and we're gonna make some fucking money back on this vehicle. So this is probably gonna pay for all the paint and primer. When you're cutting this piece off, it kind of is a bit annoying. You've got two bolts there holding the wing on, and this is part of the wing. I'm just gonna zip that off with the grinder and then proceed to continue along underneath. There's the rocker panel all removed. Um, only really bad at the back as, as they normally are at the front. It's, it's totally fine. You can see on there that the front of this rocker panel is really nice. I've cleaned it up a bit with the wire brush um, and unfortunately it took a bite out of me as well. So if any of you are squeamish, I'll put a glove on. Um, but basically uh, rust wise, if you come around the back here, which is normally my the, well, one of the first places I look. We can weld to all of that. Now I don't know whether I'll need this piece of metal yet. It just depends when I slide the piece of box section in how it all lines up and if I don't need that I'll clip it away and weld this to it. These seams need to be removed. You can't, you know, you can see my finger goes in quite a bit because there is a seam there and as I said in the last video this is going to be made seamless so we don't have starting points for corrosion so figure that out when when you come to it this is the problem area and they do this on all cherokees i have the same problem on my diesel and i'm from the uk where there's a lot of rain there so ask me how i know um they put seam sealer in there and water can get inside this right and it runs down and it drips out of there and out of that little corner there as well so really what you want to do is get rid of all the seam sealer open this all up and then just cavity wax it, film wax it from the inside so then the water can actually get out. But I'm gonna to have to repair all that and it's gonna be cut out and I'm just gonna to have to put new metal in and paint it. But inside the back end is normally the major problem. You can see that it just needs some cleaning up and, and once sort of film waxed and protected, it, it will last a lifetime. And you always get a bit of corrosion where those screws go through, where the water gets through underneath the, the step. So I'm just returning to the floor and the rust killer has done its job. It's done a very good job actually. I mean, I, I can't see any more of the orange in the pitting, which is really good. And that, that washer there with that bolt was like, it was horrendous. So, you know, it was really just a test. I mean, I really don't give, give a crap about a bolt and a washer, but the point is I just wanted to see what it did. So, I mean, there's still a tiny bit of orange here and there in some of the bad pitting, but you can obviously just keep, keep reapplying it. I think that's good enough for me. I mean, I need to clean this floor pan up now and I'm gonna prime it and that'll stay like that until I wrap to line the whole interior. This piece here is unsavable um, behind the panel and um, in the rocker panel as well. Just it's just too much corrosion. This is just from water coming down there, and going and going under here and sitting between those two pieces of sheet metal. You don't normally get it there. Um, a little bit here sometimes, but you don't sort of see it underneath all of that very often anyway. Um, well, I haven't on too many Cherokees. So 
So I don't know whether you can see up there, but you can see there's there's no corrosion on the back wall and just around the top there. So it really is just where the water couldn't escape and got sandwiched between the two pieces. I've cleaned it out as best I can. And um, the thing about the thing about this sort of area here is to do a proper job, you obviously need to drill these spot welds out or separate them and lift that plate and clean it all. But you really don't need to do that. Um, because what's going to happen when the box rock is welded in, all this metal here after you finish welding all this is going to be really hot. And when you put a hose in with like a rust inhibiting creeping wax like Dinatrol 3125 like I've got in the workshop, that stuff is incredible and it will just leach everywhere and creep under all the seams and just stop the rust from getting any worse and it will last for you know a good sort of 10-15 years. Well, I think the job's going pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. In fact, some kids just came round, sold a few more baggies. You can hear them. Everyone's having a good day. If you have a look at the back there, you can see that the rust killer's actually done a pretty decent job on some of the parts there. If I can just jet wash this down with like a steam cleaner and get it cleaned up and then dry it properly, I could I could probably do a, a weld through primer on the exposed parts. Maybe even spray some weld through primer on my exposed parts. And uh, yeah, just, just some, just relive some old, some old smell memories, do you know what I mean? It's like... Well, I'm not going to lie, it's a lot of work basically and uh, it's shitty dirty work as well and normally I like that kind of work, you know what I mean? Like, And I haven't really procrastinated over anything, I, I've literally just got stuck in because, you know, I'm, I'm not really going to go down the road of, oh, you know, that could be saved and a bit of filler there and if it's too far gone, I'm just going to cut it out and put new metal in. There's always a way of making it look good again. I mean, I'm shit at bodywork, but you can make fenders and things like I've done on my diesel there, you know, it looks really nice, but the same amount of work went into that that's gone into this really. I probably just got luckier with the floor pans and stuff in the diesel, but let's take a look and I'll show you the damage. And um, yeah, I also screwed up a bit and I need to kind of own up to that as well. I'm really annoyed with myself. So the mistake I made when you're grinding with a, di with a disc cutter, you want to be very mindful about where the sparks go. And I've been pretty good with it and been using like a welding blanket, but I've, I just stupidly forgot this window and I've just peppered it with grinder sparks, so it looks absolutely shit. I mean, I can probably take a blade to it and clean it up, but there really isn't any saving that. I've ruined it, so, you know, just a lesson learned. So this is kind of like the final results pre-prime. Um, it looks pretty good. I mean, that the rust killer has really done a great job of getting into all the pitting. 
you can kind of see like some of these areas were just orange and you know you couldn't really get in them with the wire brush but it's it's got in there and done a very good job the only thing i'll say is the cleanup is quite irritating because obviously it leaves like a white scale um which needs to be brushed away and you also have to then wash the vehicle afterwards so i washed all this last night with soapy water and then i had to dry it very quickly but this is all ready to prime but look at that frame it's beautiful really nice you can kind of see why they're so shitly made that that like lip there should be facing the other way it's probably part of the manufacturing process but it just stops water getting out i mean you know if you wanted to actually make it work properly you just get a massive 20 mil drill bit and take the lip away and then it would actually operate as a drain plug so anywhere that needs welding later i'm going to use u-pole zinc weld through primer and for the floor pans that don't need welding, like the driver's side, just a standard primer, because obviously you don't need this stuff. So there we are, everything has been sprayed. Um, well, everything that's gonna be welded and that's exposed metal and that the grinder's touched anyway, because uh, obviously when the grinder touches something, it's gonna rust a lot faster. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll just use the standard primer in here, because obviously I'm not gonna be doing any welding in there. So it's really just to offer some protection for the bare metal um, in the week to come before it goes in the garage. And um, that, as I keep saying, I'm going to have to figure that out when I when I get there. But uh, but it looks good. Um, you know, everything's been sort of protected. I really don't care about all this. I've got new weather strip, so that's all going to be put on. So it's not something I'm really bothered about uh, getting a bit of paint on. I'd rather the weather strip stay on while it's out here because it's going to stop water getting in if there is any. Um, but yeah, it looks. Uh, Looks cool, but at least everything's kind of covered now. You know, everything's protected and it's now ready to put in the garage and do some welding. Well, you have to forgive me, I've, I've gone a bit hoarse. I've probably smoked too much seam sealer. Um, but Cherokee's in a good place. Um, there might be some questions from people with regards to like, why would I do that outside? This is just like a, a backyard repair job. Um, and I've just picked a really good time with the weather deliberately. So like last week, this week and next week, it's like 22 degrees and, um, you know, nice and warm, low humidity, it, you know, nice warm breeze coming in. So it's just a really good time to do it. You know, you can leave bare metal out for a long time and it isn't, it's not going to rust where I live, you know, like here in Sweden in the north, the, the climate at certain times of year is very dry. Um, if it was in the UK, like when I used when I used to live in the UK and I, I do work on this, if I left a panel outside overnight, a lot of the time it would have rust on in the morning because there's just so much humidity in the air. It's such a damper climate, like the, fur, the further south you go. So, you know, it's really just weighing up what, uh, you know, what, what it's like where you are. Like if you're going to take on a project like this, you know, I wouldn't, if it was raining for the next three weeks, I wouldn't be doing that out there. You know, it would be in here and I'd just be living with the dust. The whole purpose of me doing out there was just, this is all the shitty, dirty work, you know, like that puts so much dust all over the workshop because it's not a big place. So, you know, I don't really have that much space to work with. So I'm just kind of tactically doing it in a way where, you know, now that's done and it's protected, it can stay there for another week in the sun, no big deal. This will be done with the locker and some other bits I'm putting on it and it can be moved out and then the four litre can be moved in. So the next step for me now, which I'll probably do on the weekend, is put the fuel tank back in and I'll probably just chuck it in the back and just have some longer hoses going to it. 
uh, some fuel line and uh, and put the wheels on and then it will just drive around as is so i'll just take it steady because obviously the spring perch isn't connected to the floor pan on one side but i don't think that would be a major problem with just bringing it in here so uh, although primer is not like amazing protection like primer can actually hold moisture so that is something you've got to factor in as well like that primer i've used the u-pole stuff this this is like a heavy zinc primer and it's um you know something you're paying for at a premium price and i've had really good luck with it but this will offer the protection needed anyway for the surfaces that i've that i've exposed um until it comes in here so it's kind of all about timing i, I wouldn't be continuing to do that out there if that was something that you were you were sort of wondering you know but yeah i mean it seems like daunting work but to be honest with you with regards to how lucky i got with that jeep that's really mild corrosion but for those of you wondering about this rust remover, um, this is a Norwegian product and um, I just got it off autodoc.se, um, which is like a car parts store here in Europe that sells stuff that's complete shite most of the time, but some of, some of it's all right. Um, this worked really well. I'm very, very impressed with it. And uh, I would say the only annoying thing about it is if you leave it there for a really long time, it, it becomes like a concrete white powder that needs wire brushing off with, with a grinder and a wire wheel or, or a very tough wire brush. So just something to bear in mind if you use that. But the results were were really impressive. Like it, it literally removed the rust. It didn't just convert it. Yeah, so that's it, you know. So you probably won't see the 4.0 now for a couple of, couple of Sundays. There's gonna be some other stuff coming up. Not that most people really give a shit and I fully appreciate that, but in my sad little world, I've got a locker that I'm just working on. I've been sat on that locker for one year, something I'm really keen to get installed. I've just finished making setup bearings for it, and I'm just waiting for the exact same bearing to come as the finalized bearing. I just want to uh, thank you for watching and uh, appreciate it. I'm feeling a bit shit, so um, <clears throat> you can probably hear in my voice, I'm probably, probably got syphilis again. And uh, yeah, it's my own fault. Um, basically so you know you live and learn like it, it just it's a shame really that you I tried to build up an immunity to it over the years you know like just just going for it do you know what I mean you just get stuck in but clearly my you know I'm not 15 anymore do you know what I mean so anyway look thanks for watching I appreciate it and um, cheers for my patrons for supporting the channel too I'll see you very soon in another one take care sorry mate we um we need to have a talk. Um, you're going to be living outside for a while. Oh, all right. <laughs>